Hey everyone, it's Wasabi Dan and Wasabi Dave. We're here for a quick video update for you. Uh, this is an update of our 2019 predictions from January, which it seems like was just yesterday and somehow was six months ago. Uh, so Dave made some predictions on what we might expect in 2019 from a storage perspective, from a market perspective, and sort of a, a vendor perspective, buyer perspective as well. And uh, rather than wait to the end of the year to see how that panned out, we thought we would publicly check in and, and see where we ended up. So the, the first prediction was that uh, cloud standards would go de facto instead of vendor neutral. You think that still holds true? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, we, we seem to be uh, moving in that direction. Um, you know, uh, there are, we have over 200 technology partners now that are, are on our website that work with Wasabi. They all have the support the uh, S3 API. So from the standpoint of third party vendors, um, ranging from uh, backup vendors like Veeam to people doing uh, all kinds of analytics, facial recognition and so forth. The S3 API seems to be by far the most widely accepted uh, interface to cloud storage. Amazon and uh, Microsoft and Google are still fighting it out. Um, I thought when we met in uh, January, I thought there was a possibility that Google would move to uh, S3 compatibility. Mm -hmm. They have an S3-like API, but they definitely are not compatible with uh, with any programs written for the S3 API at this point, um, and they don't really show a whole lot of, of uh, movement in that direction. Azure, Microsoft is just doing their own thing mm -hmm. and appear to have no interest in supporting the S3 API. Right. Yeah, and I think it's interesting that uh, Azure, the cloud version, and Azure Stack, which they introduced sometime in the last six months or so, uh, actually aren't quite feature parity either. So even within in the Microsoft world, you right. can't necessarily plug and play as, as we can, right. not even using our own right. standard. It's presents. interesting that <coughs> some companies that make uh, hardware to do on-prem uh, private clouds mm. have also adopted the S3 sure. API. Right. It's not surprising. Yeah. And it's uh, it's so widely adopted that Amazon actually can't afford to screw with it. That's right. <laughs> now, now at this point, <laughs> yay for us. Uh, the second prediction was multi-cloud. That 2019 would be the year of multi-cloud services and no more wall gardens. Where do you think we are with that? Well, uh, yes to the first part, no to the second <laughs> part. Um, it, it's definitely uh, the idea of multi-cloud is definitely taking hold, and there are a lot of companies like Wasabi that are popping up to do specific tasks. You know, we're certainly the leader in third-party cloud storage. Uh, we got other people like Packet and StackPath and, and many others that are doing content delivery networks. You've got people doing facial recognition, analytics, and so forth. And all of us have agreed to, uh, to interchange data freely uh, with no egress charges. And so sophisticated buyers are now saying, okay, I want the best cloud storage, I want the best compute, I want the best analytics, and so forth, putting it all together to make it work. Um, as for Amazon, Google, and Microsoft, they love their walled gardens. Uh, I don't see any indication that they intend to start pulling down those walls anytime soon. Right. Which is, uh, you know, that's, that's their technique. That's uh, clearly not our technique, and it right. is important to think that multi-cloud is more than we're very storage-centric by our, our nature, that's what we offer, but multi-cloud is about more than just storage, so it's really how do you pull it all together and right. take advantage of the best of the best, which is which is interesting to see people adopt. Prediction number three, fewer storage tiers. Uh, that the industry and both buyers and vendors will finally get it that having infinite choices for storage tiers is a bad idea. Where do you think we're at? Beep, <laughs> wrong. Uh, the, the big news at, at uh, Amazon reInvent this year was yet two more tiers of, of cloud storage. Right. Um, <laughs> so I think that definitely hasn't happened. I mean, we, we obviously are one tier. Um, we're faster than the fastest and cheaper than the cheapest, so we don't think you need all those tiers in between. But the uh, the incumbent th big three are not certainly not making any movement in that direction. Sure, and even questionable tiers like the uh, reduced redundancy uh, SS3 or S3 is, um, there's not really a purpose in my mind to, to have that as an option. Well, some of these things with four nines of reliability, if people really stopped and thought about what four nines of reliability meant and the, the likelihood that they're actually going to lose your file, you'll go to get it and it won't be there, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think anybody would use those tiers of storage. Right. And when you look at this, this brand new cheap tier that they have, their so-called deep archive that you get your data back in a couple of days or whatever, um, <coughs> the cost of egress is so 
it's 90 times the cost of, <coughs> excuse me, the cost of the storage. You know, I mean, unless, it, unless you're putting data away for regulatory reasons and you know you're never going to look at it, mm -hmm. it's just like, prohib still prohibitively expensive. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we have a lot more detail. We actually updated a blog post on what reliability means and how to calculate it, uh, and we'll link to that in the uh, description as well. All right, number four, the end of egress fees. No more pain to use your own data. Seems like such a good idea. What does the rest of the industry think about that? Well, all the independent guys like us, you know, think it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. uh, Amazon, Google, Microsoft have not budged on their egress fees, and they're making a killing off their egress fees. Right. Uh, and, <coughs> and then the customers hate it. You know, we hear it every day. Mm -hmm. I hate egress fees because I had no way of knowing what they were going to be in advance, and now my bill is three or four times as high as I thought it was going to be. Right. Yeah, and they have to pay to get out of it too. Yeah, <laughs> well, and it just it it sort of stinks to you to put your data in for free, but if you want to get it back, then you have to pay. Yeah, and yeah. people hate that. Right. Yeah. So we've we've partnered with on a number of fronts with Cloudflare and their Bandwidth Alliance that they announced last year. We announced this uh, year at NAB the Media Innovation Cloud Alliance, where we're all partnering together to reduce egress charges among us or wipe them out entirely. We never have them anyhow. Uh, and that's, you know, it doesn't matter what industry you're in, that's a, that's a win for everybody from the buying side, anyhow. Yeah, I think it'll eventually it'll have to go this direction. Yeah. Sometimes it's good to be the first and sometimes it's good to follow. Mm -hmm. uh, prediction number five, ever lower prices and faster speeds for storage. Uh, so we were talking primarily about the cost of hard drives uh, and the capacity. Uh, what you predicted was a 20 to 30 percent annual reduction over the next seven years for raw hard drives. How yeah, are we doing? A absolutely. I mean, we w when we were talking in uh, January, we were just about to start purchasing 14 terabyte drives, and now, just a few months later, we're we're doing 16 terabyte drives coming out. So, <laughs> you know, the the cost curve on storage continues to drop down, and eventually, that will reflect itself in the cost of the cloud storage as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, apparently, 20 terabyte drives are uh, right around the corner. From That's here. right. Yep. Great. Uh, our special bonus, number six, was that object storage would dominate from a size perspective. Um, and uh, that's mainly due because all the things that we frankly couldn't afford to store in the past didn't really work in the old ways of storing mm -hmm. things. So object storage is <coughs> relatively new, although it's, what, 12, 12 years, 15 12, years? 13 years, yeah. Something like that. <coughs> so um, where do you think, what's the market doing as far as recognizing that? Well, I think clearly uh, we were right on this one. Okay. Um, you know, block storage, which is the way data was being stored when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. Block storage is kind of becoming an edge case, you know, and it's used for things like high-speed databases and that sort of stuff. Right. But most of the world's data is is objects, you know, it's the the digital equivalent of the medium, large, and small cardboard box that you can throw whatever you got in there, whether it's mm -hmm. a video or surveillance video, or images from a satellite, uh, you know, output from a nuclear collider. Mm -hmm. Uh, you name it, mm -hmm. and uh, files are all over the place in terms of size, ranging from tiny to enormous, Yep, and they all fit in object store. Right, yeah, it's kind of a very, very flexible container. Right. Yeah. Okay, great. So that's, uh, that's the wrap of our, our predictions as we stand so far. We still have <laughs> six months to go in this year. We'll see how things shake out by the end of the year. But I uh, just so want to keep you guys up to date. So too late to change my predictions. <laughs> <laughs> Not with video evidence, no. <laughs> Thanks for your time, everyone.